Worried about the grey boundaries going up again this year? Well, you're not alone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the trends and patterns that we have seen in the grey boundaries over the last few years, explain why those changes happened, and use this to try and come up with a rough idea what the grey boundaries might be like for AQA A-level biology this year. Now, this isn't about scaring you into how high they might be. It's about being strategic with your revision and knowing what you should be hopefully aiming for when you're marking any past papers to get a rough idea of how you're doing. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll understand why the grade boundaries change each year. See what your current marks in your revision might translate into as a grade and learn how you can use all of this to sharpen your revision in the preparation for the exams coming up very, very soon. And don't forget, I have still got some of my pick and mix live revision lessons left in the lead up to the exams. These cover some of the hardest topics, the hardest skills, such as the paper two practicals, the paper two comprehension, the essay, and so much more. And I'm doing them the night before all of the exams as well. So if you want to have that extra boost to get those top grades, click the link in the description to sign up to my pick and mix lessons, where you get a live lesson with me, the recording of the lesson if you can't make it live and all of the resources and exam questions. These spaces are limited and students are loving the ones that they've come to so far so make sure you sign up now if you do want that extra help. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick, a biology teacher since 2009 but now I just exclusively teach online and I help students just like you to boost their grades and prepare for exams. So let's jump into it then, grade boundaries. Starting with why does it even matter to think about the grade boundaries at this stage. So there are three key reasons why knowing the trends in the grey boundaries can help you. Number one is so you can mark your own practice papers more accurately, knowing what grade you might be getting. Number two is understanding the impact of exam difficulty. And number three, so you can set realistic, motivating targets. Now if we go back to number one, where it was marking your papers more realistically, what I would actually recommend for this is if you're going to do the 2018 past papers, let's say, mark them strictly and I do actually have a whole video on how to accurately mark so check this video out here to make sure you are accurately marking your own work then have a look at the grade boundaries online for that particular year so you can see what grade would you have got now this is useful to give you an idea of are you on track for what you're aiming for number two was understanding the difficulty of papers and the impact that has. And this could be really helpful because if you do the past papers, mark them, and you might then see, oh, well in that paper, I really didn't do that well. But then if you use the grade boundaries, you might see you weren't the only one, that was actually a really hard paper. So it gives you a bit of an idea of the context of the papers. Was it actually just a really hard one rather than you not doing so well? And then you could be preventing yourself going into a downward spiral, getting demotivated when actually it's just the paper was harder. And then number three, it helps you to set those smart targets. So if you know on a particular paper, the grades you got, it's going to help you to be able to identify maybe particular papers, topics, skills that you need to prioritize your revision on to make the maximum amount of progress in the time you have left. So let's go on to then what has been happening with those grade boundaries. So let's take a look at those patterns. So we can see that pre-COVID, so 2017 to 2019, grade Grade boundaries did increase each year. AQA were tightening up and aiming for consistency. Now, typically grade boundaries do increase after you've had a change in spec because there's then more experience. So by that, I mean the teachers are now more familiar with exactly what the specification means and the mark scheme demands. So they're going to be able to teach more accurately for that exam. And not only that, there'll be more past papers. So students have more ability to practice. So that's why you see the grade boundaries increasing from 2017, 18, 19, because students do start performing better because of those reasons. Then we have COVID 2020 and 2021. In these years, grades were awarded by teachers, but there was the opportunity if you didn't agree with the grade, you could do an optional paper in November. And these weren't very large cohorts of people doing it. So the grade boundaries aren't really reflective of how a whole population performed. It was just a small number of people that actually did those papers. So that's why the COVID year grade boundaries in 2020 and 2021 dropped. Then we go to 2022. This was the first year of proper exams after COVID, but 
all the students were given topic lists of exactly what was going to come up and they were told what wouldn't come up and what might be assessed in a small number of questions. Plus they were told all the required practicals that were going to come up. So essentially they could really target their revision. Now the grade boundaries did rise slightly, but not fully because despite being given all of that extra support, having COVID significantly impacted those students' abilities to develop skills, to develop exam practice, because they'd never sat their GCSE exams. So their A-levels were the first external exams they'd ever sat, and that did have a knock-on effect. So that's why, despite giving all of that extra help, the grade boundaries still dropped because those students didn't have the same chances as previous students had had pre-COVID. Then we get to 2023. There were no topic lists, but students were told that the grade boundaries would still take into account that their learning had been impacted by the COVID years. So that COVID disruption to their learning skill development was taken into account. And for that reason, the grade boundaries didn't rise as much as they typically would. And then that takes us to last year, 2024. This was the first year post COVID where there were no exemptions, no topic lists, no grade boundaries to account for any disruption. Because it was deemed that it was now four years post COVID, these students hadn't had their GCSEs impacted, hadn't had their A-levels impacted. And at some point we have to go back to normal. And 2024 was the year for that to happen. And this is why it felt like such a big leap in grade boundaries. But if you actually ignore the COVID years and look at the pattern from 2017, 2018, 2019, and then 24, we would have if there hadn't been COVID, expected a gradual increase that would have led us to the point that we were at in 2024. So that's why the grade boundaries increased so much last year. But also just a point on grade boundaries, they are also based on how the cohort performs to get an indication of the level of challenge of that paper to try and standardize it each year. But basically that's why there were so many students surprised when they saw the grade boundaries and also feeling really hard done by thinking, well, if I had done my exams last, year I would have got this grade but you can't say that because you don't know because you don't know how you would have performed on that paper you don't know if you would have performed the same way because you would have had an extra year of COVID impact in your GCSEs so many unknowns but that's why a lot of students had those feelings towards the grade boundaries last year so what could that mean for you this year in 2025 and what might the grade boundaries be like so first of all this is just data analysis looking at pattern predictions of what they could be based on the trends we've seen. But grade boundaries, as I've said, are dependent on how you perform as a cohort as well, which is to reflect the level of challenge on the paper. So what I'm going to go through now is purely based on if we were to see the continual trend in what we've seen, what the grade boundaries would be. But if the papers happen to be a lot easier, the grade boundaries will be higher than I say. If the papers happen to be a lot harder, they'll be lower. Or if for whatever reason, the cohort don't perform as well, or they perform better, there will be differences. So bear that in mind. So if we average the increase between these non-COVID years, so 2018 to 2019, there was an increase of 4% to get an A star. For an A, it was 3%, B was 3%, C was 3%, D was 2%, and E was 1%. If we then have a look at the jump from 2019 to 2024, which is the last non-COVID year impacted and the most recent non-COVID year impacted, here's the level of increase we see. It was an increase of 6% to get an A star. To get an A, it was an increase of 6%. To get a B, it was an increase of 6%. A C was 5%. A D was 5%. And an E was 6%. So that was a big increase. But if you remember what I said, if this was a gradual trend and increase from 2019 to 2024, it isn't actually a jump of 6%. Really, that is a jump of maybe 2% each year. So based on that, then maybe we'll see another increase of somewhere between 3 and 5 percent again based on the fact between 2018 and 19 we saw about three to four percent and between 2019 and 2024 we saw six percent but that was a big chunk of time so that might mean to get an a star it could be anything between 74 percent and 79 percent to get an a it might be anything 
from 66% to maybe 68%, to get a B, 57 to 59%, to get a C, it might be anything from maybe 47 to 48, to get a D, it might be 37 to 39, and to get a D, 28 to 30%. Now, as I said, that is purely based on the incremental increases we see each year, but it doesn't take into account the fact that maybe the paper will be harder this year and therefore the grade boundaries will be lower if students don't perform as well. So maybe they'll actually stay at the same level as 2024. I would find it unlikely that they would dip, but they could do, it's not impossible. So these predictions are just based on the trends. They don't have any information on how you perform as a cohort, which will have an impact. So these might not be accurate because of that reason, but it's just to give you basically an idea of the potential highest they might be. So what can you do with this information? Make sure that you are doing past papers, you are marking them accurately and honestly, and you're checking the grade boundaries each year. Use this to help you focus on your weakest areas to try and aim and progress towards whatever percentage it is for the grade that I've said that you might need to get for 2025. So that is it for grade boundaries analysis, what they might be, and don't forget to help you reach those top percentages. Sign up to my pick and mix to get that last minute support going through key information, skills, and exam practice with me, a teacher since 2009, and you can see students absolutely valued it. So click the link in the description below, and I'll see you in a video very soon.